My name is Risti, and behind the camera is James. We are park interpreters with the Regional District of Central Okanagan, and today we are at Stevens Coyote Ridge Regional Park in Kelowna on the traditional and unceded territory of the Silk people. And we're here today to dive into snow science. Right now, in the part of the world where we live, it is winter. And one of the things that happens in winter is it snows. Colder temperatures causes snowflakes to form up in the sky, and those snowflakes eventually fall down to the earth. It's estimated that about one septillion snowflakes fall down to earth every year. A septillion is one followed by 24 zeros. That's approximately enough snow to make seven billion snowmen every 10 minutes for a year. A lot of snowflakes, a lot of snowmen. So snow is the result of molecular magic. A little bit of magic that we can see on any snowy day. What is one word that comes to mind when you think of snow? And if you like, you can type that word into the comments section. To understand snow, we have to start with the scientific basics. Um, snow is made up of water. Water, like any other um, matter, has three states. It comes in a liquid, a solid, and a gas. Water, of course, as a liquid, we simply call water. And can you think of an example of water as a solid and water as a gas? That's right, if you thought of ice, that's one example of water as a solid. And if you thought of water vapor or steam, those are examples of water as a gas. Let's take a closer look at how snowflakes form. Snow, of course, is water as a solid, water as an ice crystal. Have you ever caught a snowflake on your glove and taken a closer look? Have you ever wondered how such a tiny thing could have such a complicated shape? It's not snowing here today in the park at Stevens Coyote Ridge, but we did bring along some tools for investigating snowflakes. And all you really need is a magnifying glass of some sort and a pair of black gloves or a little piece of black fabric, or if you have it, some sort of black metal plate. And the metal, of course, will get nice and cold in the cold air and if you catch a snowflake on the cold metal it'll help keep the snowflakes shape so you can put your magnifying glass over top and get a closer look at it. One. Each snowflake that you see on the ground started its journey up in the sky as a droplet of water. In warmer weather, droplets of water might stick together and fall to the ground as rain. In colder weather, those droplets of water crystallize and they crystallize onto a particle of dust or pollen that's up in the sky and they start to form a snowflake. And as that primary crystal falls down through the sky, other water droplets will stick to it and crystallize and the snowflake begins to grow. Each snowflake is a hexagon, a six-sided shape, which means it has six sides or six arms to each flake. Snowflakes are made of water, so their molecular structure, of course, is H2O, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. And a molecule of H2O has a V shape with the oxygen in the middle and then a hydrogen on one side and a hydrogen on the other side and it forms a V. And when those water molecules stick and freeze together, they form a hexagon. And as other droplets crystallize onto that primary crystal, it adds to the hexagon in an even symmetrical way. So the snowflake doesn't change, change its shape, it just grows bigger. Even if you looked all day, you would never find two snowflakes that are alike. Each 
snowflake is a different shape. And the reason why? Because each snowflake falls in a unique path to the ground. And the path that a snowflake follows as it falls determines the shape that the snowflake will be. Snowflakes fall down through the sky and they go through different clouds of different temperatures and different levels of moisture. And each of these factors develops how, um, affects how the water droplets will crystallize and the shape that the flake and that the arms of the flake will take. And different temperatures affect how a flake, uh, how a water droplet crystallizes. At minus five degrees Celsius, a snowflake will be sort of a long needle, needle shape. At minus 15 degrees Celsius, a snowflake will be more of a flat plate-like shape. When there's lots of snow on the ground, not only is it fun to play in and build all those seven billion snowmen, but it's important for the animals through the winter. Snow is insulation for animals in the park, meaning that the snow helps to keep the animals warm. Because of the way that water freezes, a snowflake is made up of about 80% air. So in this layer of snow on the ground, it's comprised of mostly air, and all of that air helps to trap heat and keep animals that are burrowing underneath the snow, it helps to keep them warm. So animals in the park like mice and squirrels and voles, anything that's active in the winter, looking for food, trying to stay warm and stay safe from predators, these animals get to burrow and tunnel under the snow, and the snow is like a nice cozy blanket for them in the winter. Even for the black bears that we have in a lot of our parks, if they happen to have a nice layer of snow over their den, it's a cozy blanket for them as they hibernate through the winter. So thinking of everything that we've learned, what one word now comes to mind when you think of snow? And how does learning about snow science make you feel about snow? How does it make you feel about winter? Have, have you had a chance yet to go out and explore a park trail? If not, then bundle up and go out and conduct a snowflake investigation of your own. Thank you for joining us and keep an eye on our website, rdco.com backslash parks for parks information and updates.